Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to your weekly news wrap-up. I'm DJ Nikki in the studio today with Cassie from ElwoodCity.org. How are you today? I'm okay, Nikki. How are you? The wintertime is getting to us, I can tell. It really is. You know what? I've heard I feel like I should be hibernating. (laughs) (laughs) I know, right? It's it's so true, though, with... um, you know, people say like seasonal depression is like a real thing. Oh yeah, and it makes so much sense because like I walk outside and I'm just like, oh, it's so gloomy out here, and it's like I don't know. I feel like my energy I, is really reflectable on whatever the weather is because well, whenever yeah, it's you, you figure, nice out, you know, like it's different. Like plants absorb energy from the sun to do all the cool chlorophyll things they need to do, mm-hmm. but people really are the same way. Like with lack of UV rays people their energy levels plummet and we literally absorb energy from the sun so a lot of businesses try to use uv lighting mm-hmm. in their offices because it makes people feel better you know but yeah that lack of uv you know not only is it not warm enough for me to want to go outside but there's only 10 hours of daylight oh i know you know i mean although i think i've noticed that it's starting to get darker a little bit later it's a little bit later it's not just yeah. barely barely starting to stretch out yeah yeah but it makes a difference it does honestly because if it, if the sun's not going down at like four o'clock <laughs> <laughs> then i'm happy you know what i well, mean it'll feel better um in the springtime whenever we turn our clocks ahead mm-hmm. you know because then it's just gonna feel later in the day so it'll it'll, it'll feel better then but I've, you know, I've read other studies and stuff that they've done about special lamps and lighting that you can put this and help increase your melatonin levels and make you feel happier and all this. And I'm like, I need to like put them all through my house because I mean, seriously, in the wintertime, my energy level is low. I know, me too. And like, I'm I hate being cold. Me and too. because I hate being cold, I want to curl up under a blanket, which mm-hmm. just makes me feel even more sleepy. I know. I'm, like, so inactive in the winter, too. I'm, like, I have all these goals. I'm, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, go out and exercise and do all these great things. And it's, like, whenever I actually, like, go home, I'm, like, I just want to, like, take a nap. You're making me yawn just thinking about (laughs) it. (laughs) Well, anyways, um, I guess that we should do our news report. I absolutely. (laughs) I agree. I think we should kick into the news. Okay. Um, Again, I feel like there's not a whole lot going on because of you know kind of what we because everybody's (laughs) hibernating that's why yes there's not really a whole lot to talk about again which is kind of a good thing because that means that no news is good news exactly but i do have a couple things um one thing that i thought was particularly interesting was that there's a new suboxone clinic that actually just opened up here in elwood not that long ago and after speaking with the clinic director, uh, she discussed with me that, you know, there's quite a bit of controversy regarding the Suboxone clinics because, you know, I, I guess that there's a lot of misconception about, I guess, drug addicts in general and well, having the... I think that people that don't understand addiction and they don't understand the disease, I think they view these clinics as a free-for-all way to just get drugs yeah that's exactly and it's really not i've i've dealt with addicts in my life not that i not that i let them close to my life Mm -hmm. but i don't feel the need to turn my back on certain people and i have seen these clinics keep these people clean off of the nasty street drugs that are literally ruining people's lives and I've seen the effects of not being able to get them, and the addicts go right back to the drugs, and the drugs are so much worse oh, yeah. than the treatment for them. Oh yeah, well, especially because, you know, you always have that possibility too of not knowing what you're getting whenever it's exactly street, you know exactly. what I mean? So. I had a friend of mine, she had a couple of kids, you know what I mean? And she would go to the clinic and when you first get your treatment at the clinic you are i would say kind of out of it you know but she would always make sure that somebody was babysitting her kids in the morning because they always go to the clinic very early in the morning but then she would be completely normal and high functioning the rest of the day 
and not wanting to go get that fix. Mm -hmm. Well, something happened and she quit going to the clinic and then within two months was back on street drugs and within one month of that lost her kids to CYS. So, you know, it was like, if you don't think the clinics are doing a good thing, ask the kids that don't have their mothers. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? Again, like I talked to the clinical director and she said, uh, it's yes, it's still an opiate derived, um, you know. Drug. Yeah, medication. Yeah. But it's controlled. Yeah, it's controlled and it is specifically like made so that whoever the user is is still able to function like that right is and it's safe because when you get street drugs you have no idea who made it or what the mix is or what's even in it yeah yeah it's just it's horrible and it's so risky and it is it is i mean there's a lot of people out there that also think like you know medicine that you get from the doctors is still risky and it you know it is because you don't honestly know what's going into it but personally i would trust it a lot more coming from a doctor yeah i would <laughs> i would definitely trust getting medication from a doctor before i would you know trust getting some home concocted remedy from exactly. somebody yeah yeah exactly so i don't know i so you said it's just recently opened yes i believe it opened in november so it's only really been open and you said for, it's located right near the hospital mm -hmm, it's about two blocks from there and um they have the ability to help like 210 patients at a time so they're wow. they're only at, like i think 15 right now since they just opened but the more demand that there is the more that their hours are going to increase like they're only open uh on tuesdays right now but like i said as their demand increases so will their hours so anyone who needs help and whatever it's well the thing is like they only accept insurance so if someone doesn't have insurance um there's going to be a bit of an issue there i'm sure that they would probably work with someone to help them get insurance yeah i think a it. lot of the places are like that now i mean ever since uh the whole obamacare thing came in where everybody had to have insurance mm -hmm. to push that not only did they penalize you when you filed your taxes if you hadn't gotten insurance but they also worked with different branches and organizations to make it to where you can't go there unless you have insurance. Yep. And it's just another push to make sure that everybody gets it, you know, that everybody has insurance. I'm not sure how that whole insurance thing is going to turn or twist now that we have a new president, but I know that that was the direction it was going, and that's why a lot of places are like that. Even if you see commercials on TV about drug treatment centers, mm -hmm. they'll always say, I wish I had insurance. I could have gotten help, you know. And they're right. just pushing it. Right. It's sad. You know, it's sad that people are out there that still don't have insurance. I know, but I guess that that's life, isn't it? Right. Which really is lame because I know that we've talked about this before, too. Whenever I was over in England, it was, quote, unquote, free health care. And I quote, unquote, that because it's, you know, it's always being paid for by the taxpayers. But you didn't have to worry about getting private insurance yeah. everyone was treated like if you went to the hospital for something you would definitely be treated no matter if you had you know the money to pay for it or not because it was all paid for yeah all right so that's um do we have a contact number for them if somebody does have insurance and they're trying to reach out for some help I do not have their contact number written down here, but I know that uh, their website is freedomtreatment.com. So for anyone that needs to find their contact information, I know it's on there. Well, I actually just pulled it up, uh, the contact information for them. They're located at 773 Pershing Street in Elwood, which is, um, like you said, about two blocks from the hospital. And their phone number is 724-201-0850. Again, 724-201-0850. And that's, um, they're called the Freedom Healthcare Services. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's correct. All right. Well, that's good to hear. It's positive. Um, what else have we got going on in the news? Um, 
I actually just thought this was kind of interesting and kind of goes along with what we talked about last week regarding the school being closed for uh, sanitation reasons. Oh, because, the, yeah. the coli yeah. was found in the water system. Um, I mean, this is not directly related, but due to the old infrastructure of Pennsylvania cities in general, um, it's just good to know that, like, we're finally starting to rebuild our sewer systems and uh there was just a press release released um in newcastle that the newcastle sanitation uh will be receiving 11 million in state funding uh for projects that involve the installation of more than 220,000 feet of service lines and other improvements to the system because after a sewage disposal needs survey, they found that 69% of the on-law disposal was malfunctioning. Oh my. So I guess that's a great thing that they got $11 million so they could fix it. Yeah. Um, now we wanted to mention that the E. coli was not found in Elwood City School water system. It was Mohawk. Yes, that is correct. Uh, yeah, so if you guys missed that last week, it was Mohawk School. And... Um, just didn't want anybody to freak out like why didn't i hear about this you know (laughs) no i wasn't here but all right um hey i want to just throw in real quick and this is um a little mention that i wanted to talk about the radio station last year had a um rigatoni dinner and it was a fundraiser for the radio station we had just kicked off it was actually a great success since then we've had a few floppy fundraisers um, pretty much just because we're so understaffed. Mm-hmm. But we are putting together um, our big Italian supper kind of fundraiser here, and it's coming up really, really quick. And it's going to be um, February 25th, so we're only about a month away now. And it's a Saturday, and it's going to be a penny pasta meatball dinner. It also comes with salad, breadsticks, drinks, and desserts. And we're going to be doing that as our WXED fundraiser. And adult plates are going to be eight dollars, and kids five and under are five dollars. So, it's you know it's a great value, especially if you have kids and stuff, and you get to come over here and hang out with the staff from the radio station. And so I'm hoping that um, I can get you to make it over here. That sounds I'm delicious. Sure. Like I'm over here, like you yeah. know how they say like dogs have like picturative like memories. Like if you say you yeah. want to go for a walk, they like imagine a walk. As you're describing the food, I'm like. <laughs> I'm like imagine. thinking of like a breadstick right now. Like yeah. that sounds amazing. Um, I know that last year we had a couple of complaints about the rigatoni because you know rigatoni is such a big pasta, and it just you put a cup of it on your plate and it really doesn't look like much. You know when you talk about a, a cup of rigatoni, mm-hmm. so we didn't want to go. Some some people have a hard time you know cutting the spaghetti if you get you know young kids or somebody that has arthritic hands spaghetti's hard to deal with you know you gotta twist it and turn it so we decided that the best thing that we could do is we're gonna go with penny pasta okay and so it's gonna be penny pasta with big meatballs salad breadsticks drinks dessert the whole nine yards and then you know we'll all be there so hopefully if people want to get to see i always say i'm I'm in the studio with a beautiful miss cassie if you come to the penny pasta dinner you'll find out for sure (laughs) Absolutely. Smooth, Nikki. (laughs) All right, so do we have anything else going on? I know we said we didn't have a whole lot of news this week. No, I think that pretty much wraps it up, honestly. Those are all the interesting things that really went on this week. All right, we want to remind you guys, if you hear anything and you want to know more details, you can find more details at elwoodcity.org. This is WXED 107.3 FM, and that's your weekly news wrap-up.